Backrooms the Lost Tape is an indie backrooms game that crosses over SCP and the backrooms into one world. About a month ago, Tether 2 of the game got released and it happened to fall on FNAF's 10th anniversary. For those who don't know what the story of the game is about, it's about a guy named Josh who is working at a movie theater and all of a sudden he falls into the backrooms. But it doesn't end well because Josh goes missing in there. Chapter 2 is about the beginning of the rescue mission to find Josh. Chapter 2 of the game brings in a more realistic quality and also features new levels, but most of them don't really seem like real backrooms levels. But what you don't know is that the places you explore are actually real backrooms levels from the wiki and of course the fandom wiki. Yes, there are some that are taken from the fandom wiki. So in this video, I'm going to explain every level that's being adapted in this chapter. Level 0 is the first level we entered the wet moldy carpet with the yellow wallpaper, but this time it's different from what looked like the last time. The fluorescent lights are built differently, and there are different locations and things to be discovered. There are no exits that are attached that would lead to the original level 0 from chapter 1. A door is locked in the section right where the lonely tree sits. We must start exploring the backrooms or to find the code we need to progress. There are no entities in this version level 0, but there is an SAP that haunts you after the lights turn off, and you have to run to the exit in order to escape it. The next place you visit is an indoor water park, which is probably meant to be a variation level 7. Level 37 is a class 1 level, and it's one of the most popular backroom levels with a ton of different adaptations. In this version of the pool rooms, we travel to what resembles an indoor water park with kiddie pools and nostalgic lighting. Not to mention the music that plays in the background gives out the vibes that would bring you back when you are just a child. Once you're making it through the slides, you enter a fancy restaurant with a giant fish tank, only to travel for an empty hallway that has an exit slide at the end. Now, these are where the new locations come in. The first unfamiliar location is the supermarket. This is supposedly level 176, which is a level that resembles a grocery store, just like the place we enter after trying for the indoor water park. There seems to also be some sort of lounge in the level. I'm assuming the cafe area is where that version of the lounge is. You can hear wind blowing and items falling off the shelves and the checkouts are empty and there is nobody really present. The supermarket does everything but one thing that is different. So in the wiki, level 176 is supposed to be infinite. This supermarket in the game is not really infinite. It's just a regular sized supermarket. The goal in this level is you gotta look for a price tag that is possibly the code for the back room of the store, which will lead to the next level. However, the lights are off, so finding the code is gonna be a bit more tricky to find. Because, well, I'm just not gonna say if you're alone or not. You just gotta find that out yourself. The next area we enter is what seems to be an old hotel hallway from like the 1980s or something. It's unclear what level this is supposed to be. Some people think it's level 5 which I'm not too sure about, but the place does seem a bit luxurious, so it possibly could be the hotel level. But below the level is an indoor home structure, and the whole hotel theme fades away. I think it's meant to be an original level space and not level 5, because if you compare the Tower Hotel and everything a hotel has, this is just a hotel hallway that leads to an indoor house structure, plus the section is very short, and you just get to the next section in another 5 minutes. Which means this cannot be level 5 and it's just a normal looking level space just like what chapter 1 had. The next level we travel to is the Pulse City which is also known as level 333. It's also known as the Edge of Oceanic Fears and I'll be honest with you, I do like this game's adaptation. It's so much better than what the fandom wiki decided to give us. 
Level 333 is a class 0 level where in this adaptation, the ocean brings in smooth sounds while the structure brings in a satisfying piece of this strange and beautiful world. However, the exit is flooded and it's preventing you from progressing, but at least you can join a new scenery, which you'll probably get used to while searching for the source to drain the flooded exit, as well as the night ambience that also plays when you're halfway done pulling all the valves to drain your exit. Below the pool city lies level 300.2, the dark pool rooms, which has became well known thanks to Escape the Backrooms. In this backroom story, we need to travel through a dark pool rooms with no detail as if there's any threats deep below the pool city. However, we do stay calm and look around despite there not being much to look at besides pool tiles. We don't see any clumps or high large plague like we do Escape the Backrooms or any other entities for that matter. Maybe because we entered a safe point of the level, it's oddly relaxing even though it should it. It's very dark. It's like walking in a nightmare that you enjoy, which why would you? Luckily, there is an exit that just happens to be the worst exit known. That's unless if you're like jumping in a very deep pool. Once you dive deep into the pool, you'll enter a school. Now, this is actually meant to be level 900, aka school detention. Now, it kind of has some elements of level 52, but level 190 is filled with classrooms, an accessible backroom, and a working computer. Yes, there's actually a working computer as well as working Wi Fi. It's a class 2 level, which would contain a low entity count, but in Lost Tape, the computer acts a bit differently. It starts a countdown, meaning you will need to find a gem in order to get out. There's, however, a connection in level 190 in this backrooms universe. This place is known as Hillside High. Hillside High School has become an epic center of the eerie phenomenon, as soon as the staff reports sightings of colorless balloons just through the hallways at night. These mysterious balloons move as if guided by unseen forces, adding to the school's chilling atmosphere. Local legends suggest these balloons represent the spirits of children who perished in the tragic fire that destroyed the original building in 1923. Witnesses have described the balloons as pale and ghostly, with some reporting faint laughter and whispers accompanying their movements. Principal Alan Pearson acknowledged the unsettling events, stating, It feels like these spirits are trying to communicate with us. As fear grips the community, many parents are keeping their children home. The ghostly balloons continue to cast a shadow over Hillside High School, serving as a haunted reminder of its tragic past. So, once you get the crystal and it activates, you'll be taken to another dimension. That dimension happens to be level 84, which is a class 3 level according to the wiki. It's a very expensive maze that leads in different directions. The large areas are labeled as safety parks, which I guess are the safe spots. Lost Tape's version is very beautiful and it's practically just a safe level. There is a smart graveyard and if you steal its spirit's favorite block, they will get mad and start messing with your power and you'll get very unnerving ambient music instead and also very cloudy sky. Level 84 in Lost Tape is very easy to get lost in since it's literally a labyrinth. But what I learned is that if you follow the lights, it will lead you to a pedestal where you need to place three blocks including the one from the mini cemetery. Once you place all the blocks down, it will start raining and storming and you will be teleported out of the garden that was once very peaceful until you ruined it. Since you ruined the garden, Level 84 has decided to punch you to Level 400 which is literally an infinite ocean, and is the last level of chapter 2, which makes sense since level 400 is also known as the ocean of the final frontier, which is pretty much the end of this chapter. The class danger level does change throughout the level, for you there are no threats at least, you do get saved at the very end before anything bad happens. The only difference is that a lost tape with level 400 that the wiki doesn't tell you is that there are wind turbines in the distance. And that's the only thing that exists in the deep sea dimension. Also, we never see... I'm just not going to pronounce that name. Which means this wasn't a class 0 part of level 400. And this was a class 5 part, which was the depths. And you wouldn't believe it. 
the wiki image matches exactly where we are in the game. And at this point, we have reached the end of the chapter. Not sure when chapter 3 will come out, but it'll possibly have some levels we've never heard of yet. But that's it, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.